Okay, so would you please tell us your name? Walter Albert, Jr. Mm -hmm. And when did you attend Susquehanna? Came in as a freshman, September 1951, and graduated May of 1955. And what have you brought to the history harvest today? A few things that I've saved, uh, a wall, flannel, poster, I guess you would call it, and a tie, my diploma, and some yearbooks, and some publications from my time, the newspaper, The Susquehanna. Wow. Maybe you could show us these items, yeah? I can pass them over to you. We can try to get them on the camera. Yeah. This was the classic Susquehanna tie. Ooh. from 1955. Wow. Was that something that you would wear around campus? Or? Yeah. Okay. And of course, I've worn it at alumni days mm -hmm. when, on my comeback. Yeah. Okay, wow. <laughs> can you just please put it in front of the camera here so we can get a good view of it? Is that meant to be like a globe? Yes, like that was the school symbol back then oh, from nice. the date of origin, 1858. That was the logo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that. Wow. I think I still see the globe on some things. I think we still have that. Mm hmm Yeah. That's the historic one, dating the beginning of the school. The other thing I brought that I saved was this wall flannel crusader. Okay. Wall hanging. <laughs> Really nice. Where did you get that? You bought it at the bookstore. Okay. To hang in your room or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> the other thing I brought because I don't know what's happening today with diplomas, but the diplomas back then were in Latin on sheepskin. Wow. Well, they're certainly not in Latin anymore. <laughs> As a result, I had to have my Latin professor translate it for oh. me. <laughs> uh, do you mind reading it for us? I have a copy for you. Oh, okay. Awesome. So you studied science while you were here? I started in liberal arts, history major, and switched my junior year and got my degree in business administration. That made my senior year very difficult mm -hmm. because I had to take full 18 credits in order to get all the business courses in. Okay. And everybody <laughs> else was cruising through with 12 credits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think students face that same problem today. <laughs> yeah, if you switch majors. And the other things I forgot to record, which you might be interested in, was this was the newspaper. It was published on a regular basis. Okay, the Susquehanna. Yeah. Yeah. Including advertising uh -huh. from local merchants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this particular one, I didn't know that I really saved, but I guess I saved it because I was personality of the week. Oh. <laughs> Students got, it was something they did on a continuing basis. Okay. By the time you were here four years, you somehow got in there. Okay. Does it say anything about you and why oh, you're the personality a, of the week? It just <laughs> who I was and where I came from and if I'm your daughter, brother. Okay. What I was going to do after college, didn't know, <laughs> but found out pretty quickly. And I saved a lot of these because this was a particular issue that a lot of my friends from that era, the ladies, were part of the big May Day celebration. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a big May Day celebration anymore? We don't. I doubt it. No. Well, that was a big event, like the first weekend in May, mm -hmm. two weeks before graduation. 
So this was the newspaper. So she can't come. She lives all the way down in North Carolina. So they were some of the memorabilia I brought. And the other thing, I don't know whether you show in your archives somewhere in the building. Is there an archive area where yes. things that have been brought are given to you for saving? Yes, we have an archives in the basement of the library. Right. Yes. So back um, six years ago, they didn't have a dink mm -hmm. from those years. I gave them my dink. I hope it's still here. You know what a dink was? No. <laughs> when you came to Susquehanna in those years, you went through freshman hazing up till Thanksgiving. Freshman hazing included freshmen being identified with a dink so that upper class persons could ask you for any assistance that they might need. Oh. Okay, and freshmen were obligated to respond to any senior class junior member if they requested you to run an errand, mm -hmm. carry their books, uh, do menial tasks. Okay, that's what the freshmen were obligated to do. No big deal, mm -hmm. right? Except you had to be identified with your dink. Okay. <laughs> until after Thanksgiving. Little felt dink with the little emblem on it, you know. Okay. Nice. And that was part of freshman hazing. Not, not as I say, not a big deal. <laughs> but something you went through. Some young people today might object to something like that, but we thought it was great fun. <laughs> So that next year, we were upperclassmen, and we could uh, have the yeah. freshmen help us. That's true. See that? <laughs> so that if you live through the first few months of your freshman year, then you could initiate the next group of freshmen. When I came to Susquehanna, the student population was approximately 550 total, including some commuting students. Wow. My freshman class was 110 and 57 graduated in 55. Mm -hmm. Now if you picture that point in time in history, uh, we students coming in 1951 were all depression babies and not a lot of families had a lot of children in the depression. Mm -hmm. So therefore the class coming in that year was very small. Prior to that the classes were a little bit larger with coming in, with uh, freshmen coming in, but also with veterans from World War II yes. and the Korean conflict on the GI Bill coming to school. Mm -hmm. By the time I left in 55, they had all graduated in 52 and 53. Mm -hmm. So that evolution moved. So The other thing that Susquehanna had back then was young women could come in and work for a certificate program if they didn't want a four-year degree. Okay. Do they still have a certificate program? I doubt it. No, I don't believe so. That meant one of the career options for women back then was to be an administrative assistant slash secretary. Mm -hmm. So you came to Susquehanna for a two-year program, and after two years, you were ready to take a position as an administrative assistant or a secretary. Mm -hmm. So 20 of the young ladies left our class after the second year. So that's one of the reasons for the big reduction ah, yeah, from 110 to 57 yes. by the time we all graduated, mm -hmm. with some transfers in and some transfers out. But the beautiful thing that I found about Susquehanna in those years was the school being so small, you got to know everybody. Yes. Yeah. Seniors, juniors, everybody. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons was you had formal dining in Cyber Hall. Ooh. Oh, really? Yes. No cafeteria. <laughs> Okay, so you had lunch and dinner in Cyber Hall. Freshmen were assigned tables mixed in with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And every four weeks your table rotated and you met new people. And you dressed for dinner. 
eating at the rest for lunch. So if you look at Cybert Hall, the right-hand wing downstairs on the first floor was chapel. The left-hand wing back through the Cybert was the dining hall. Would you like that kind of environment? Hmm? Seems a little smaller than what we're used to today, I don't think. <laughs> well, the challenge is doing that yeah. on a big scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a lot more students now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it's amazing how much activities was in Cybert Hall. Yeah. Yes. And the ability to get to know everybody was an advantage. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And that <laughs> evolved all four years. So by the time I was junior, of course, by then I did move to the frat house, so I wasn't on campus. But those other freshmen who came in, you know, my sophomore year, you got to know everybody. Mm -hmm. You still got to know everybody even though you moved to the frat house. Mm -hmm. So it was a different world yes. than you guys are experiencing here today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I've taken all the time. You have more questions? Oh, no, it's, it's fine. We like to just, like, talk. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Yeah. We'll, like, okay. take the stories over, like, the generic questions. Yeah. <laughs> what are the generic questions? Um, a lot of them dealt with asking you about your items, which we've done that. If you right. Any more you'd like to share about them, you could. Have we discussed No, the other things yeah. that I brought were things related to my class and our 50th anniversary year and our 60th anniversary year, oh, okay. so I could share that with classmates. Oh, okay. Things that I saved from our reunion years. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then the two yearbooks that I brought. Okay. Which I've shown you some of the things that... Uh... Yeah, the Five New Delta House is no longer there. Mm -hmm. It's up on the hill. Yeah. Could you lift that up and show us? Yeah. Still looks nice back then. Yeah. It was the house on campus. Mm -hmm. And how they were able to build that house during the Depression, I don't know, but our previous brothers somehow did mm -hmm. it. And uh, I joined Fine New Delta and was able to move there my junior year. As long as I got a scholarship to be able to afford it. Uh -huh. Now the other thing that was very common in those years was two-thirds of the students were on working scholarships. Mm -hmm. I mean everything from helping with athletics to library duty to being a dishwasher on campus to being a server in the dining hall mm -hmm. to doing maintenance work with the maintenance team mm -hmm. Anything that could be done that the school didn't have to hire somebody to do it, you would get half your room and board ah. for a scholarship wow. if you worked on campus. That's a good deal. It was a good deal. So financially, the students supported the school by working and then getting a break on room and board. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you could be a proctor in the dormitory. That was a working scholarship. Okay. You could be selected by a professor who needed some extra hands-on work and he would request a student to be put on scholarship to work for him or her. Mm -hmm. So that's the way most of us got through. Without that working scholarship, I wouldn't have been here. Mm. <laughs> so this, and here's the other amazing thing. My first year room board and tuition because I wasn't able to get a scholarship my first year, mm -hmm. was a thousand dollars. Now, how do you relate that to today? Uh huh. I don't know the inflation. I don't know. But that's really the cheap only thing I can relate to try yeah. to say today. To my parents, my dad was only making six thousand a year as his salary, working factory work. Mm -hmm. My tuition would have been about twenty percent of that. So it was even going to be a challenge for my mom and dad to help me with my education mm -hmm. unless I was able to win a working scholarship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yes. Very important in those years yes. to work your way through college. Mm -hmm. And some, some students had to not only working scholarship on campus, they had some kind of a sideline job with a business in town. Mm -hmm. 
but they work part time. So even though the tuition, room board tuition, was relatively low, it was all relative to the income that was being produced by the wage earners, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I can't relate to your now room board and tuition is what fifty thousand. Oh. I think room and board is about around ten thousand. Well, it's around that much, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But your total cost, total, total total cost is like. It's up to fifty-two thousand, fifty-five thousand yes. now. Yeah. Wow. Damn. That. That's tough for me to comprehend, but it's mm -hmm. all relative to income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now my son graduated in seventy-eight, and his final year room board and tuition was only fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. So the escalation of cost from seventy-eight till now just boggles my mind. Yes. But we had to work our way through school. Now, for me to get to the fraternity house in my junior year, mm -hmm. I was going to lose part of my scholarship because I'm moving off campus, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So in order to afford room and board here, I had to win a scholarship, a working deal, in order to afford to move here off of campus. Mm -hmm. So my, one of my best buddies and I, after our sophomore year, we... we had joined the fraternity and we put our names in and we were selected to be dishwashers. So I went from dishwasher on campus for two years <laughs> to dishwasher at the fraternity house for two years okay. so I could afford to live at the frat house. Wow. So <laughs> my wife said to me, you're a good catch. You minored in dishwasher. I'm going to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it relates, but it was does. what you did. <laughs> any other questions? Do you appear in any of the Find You Delta pictures on that page? That's me. Oh, can you show us? <laughs> the one on the left? Or it's the one with the helmet. Right there? The ah! One, the one with the helmet. What were you doing there? That was part of a frat party. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> and of course I'm in the big picture and my friend Ken is going to be here today but his health is declining God bless him now we put on a, a skit at one of our frat parties okay now at a frat party in those years you had to have a fraternity advisor which was a professor mm-hmm so each fraternity and or sorority had a professor assigned as an assistant to them or as a monitor to them. So if you had a frat party in a frat house back then, you had to have a chaperone. Mm -hmm. The teacher had to be there. Mm -hmm. And there was no drinking on campus. And the frat house was part of campus. Now, does that relate to today? Can no. you have a party? <laughs> Can you have a party with soft drink and pretzels and regular food? Yes, you can. We mm -hmm. had great parties. We didn't need the buzz of Alki. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a challenge for the vets. Yeah. I right? can imagine that. Yeah. But still, that was the rule on campus, and they understood it. The vets' time for their drinking was downtown. Mm -hmm. That's all the time we have for this interview. And young ladies like you had to sign in and sign out of dormitories. Oh. And during the week, you had to be back in your dormitory by 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. On weekends, you had 12 o'clock. Okay. And when the women went left, they had to sign in and sign out. And there was a house monitor, another, a woman at Cybert and house singer, mm -hmm. who took care of making sure the girls were taken care of. Mm. <laughs> Well, thank you very much thank for you. visiting yeah, us for today. All great stories. All wonderful stories. Love to tell those stories. A minor in dishwashing. A minor in dishwashing. <laughs> very practical. <laughs>